Well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the chat realm interview show. Uh, joining me on this episode is host of Jury Talks, co-host of Night Attack, Weird Things, FSL Tonight, Daily Tech News Show, and also weekly guest on the morning stream, Justin Robert Young. Man, when you say it, it sounds like I'm pretty busy. <laughs> well, of course, you do Go Game and, and all that as well. I do. That's a fact. I'm not trying to hide it. <laughs> it's it, You know, this is a, an interview show. I try not to make it look too much like an Inquisition. but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I said bring it on, bro. Yeah, right. Bring, bring it on. All right. So normally I ask what the what the origins of your chat handle are, but that's that's pretty obvious. It's the uh, you know the, um, letters of your 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 initials. But um, wh how did you get the nickname Jury? Because I imagine that comes before the internet and shortening things like that. No, it was it was Brian. It was, are you it was BB Live Show? Yeah. No, nobody had ever called me Jury, and, and uh, Andrew or sorry Brian rather. Uh, we started doing BB Live Show. It was like super early. Uh, you know, I I'd, I'd gone by Justin Robert Young for for a while. Um, is there Justin Young? Young is not only a very popular name; it is um, a popular name in not one but two ethnicities. You know, <laughs> it, it's a fairly popular black name. It's a fairly popular. Asian name, so it's like there's just a lot of people with the last name Young, and Justin was a very, very popular boy's name, especially for people around my age. So oh, there sure. was a, a, a Hawaiian singer named Justin Young that uh, was very popular in Google when I was, you know, first starting to care about stuff like that. And you know, my middle name kind of works, so I very much enjoy, um, you know, having that option. And so I've been, I was going by Justin Robert Young for a while, uh, in terms of writing and stuff like that. And then I was on with Brian once and he mentioned jury and he's like, Oh, people had to have called you jury before. And I'm like, absolutely not. But absolutely. it kind of stuck. And it sort of, <laughs> you know, was kind of the name that people knew as podcasting stuff that I did kind of took off a little bit more, you know? And, and so, that's uh i think it's i love the name because it, it very much reminds me of that no definitely well and while justin robert young does roll off the tongue pretty well jury is as much as your uh for shortened uses you know oh yeah definitely well so you obviously do uh, a, a bit of tech stuff um but you you know being that you do the go game you also do a lot of non-tech stuff so what's your favorite non-tech activity you know offline sort of thing um, non-tech activity. Eating, know. probably. Eating? eating drinking. <laughs> yeah, so I think I love that. I love eating good food. What? So what's like, your favorite, like, ethnicity of food, if you will? <laughs> um, Genre? if I'm choosing ethnic food, I would probably say Italian. Like, in general, I think I like a good, fancy Italian dinner i like you know kind of the super cash sort of like uh like pizza situation like i feel like italian's kind of where it's at yeah, also i really like good. garlic and basil okay that's true yeah there, there are some good good spices so you, you definitely get along with uh len peralta's family right uh, sp spaghetti every friday night oh yeah no definitely <laughs> i think i'm just next time i'm in cleveland i'll just roll by and yeah, just, yeah you know make sure that uh that they, they pull up a chair for me Although, well, now that I think about it, I mean, like, you know, it's hard to go wrong, especially in California with Mexican food. That's true. Um, you know, burrito, just just the way to go. Burritos yeah. are just a rad, a rad thing. You can put just about anything in, in them, too. As long as those, those ingredients relatively go together, it's going to be fine. There's a place by me in Oakland that I haven't gone to that does torpedo sushi, is what it's called. And their idea is kind of burrito style sushi burrito style sushi so it's like you just get instead of basically like you know instead of cutting up a roll right they have a little bit more of an overstuffed roll that you just eat huh. like you would a burrito well, that's interesting i haven't tried it yet i'm not I sure know. how i feel about that <laughs> uh, neither do i but one day i'm gonna try it and i'm gonna i'm gonna remember i'll be doing it in honor of you tim beck <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, you're gonna have to write out of you or, or talk about it on Night Attack. Actually, that that should be interesting. Yeah, that might be more of a jury a jury topic. But yeah, no, I think That's maybe true. I'll maybe this will be the 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 
goose in the butt I need to go and actually do it. <laughs> yeah, because you have some you have somewhere to talk about it now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so you're an avid Twitter Twitter or tweeter tweeters. Yeah. Yeah, you do I that. Like Twitter. Do that Twitter's a lot. Fun. What's the What's the best Twitter account you follow? Like one that has the most interesting things that that you just kind of every time you see them post something, you're like, oh, what is this? Um, I think my, I love really, really, really well done single purpose Twitter accounts. Like I love, there's one that's just like Amazon movie reviews. Oh, sure. And it's just like awesome, like shitty, crazy, like, you know, Amazon movie reviews. Um, and then of course, like saved you a click, saved you a click's really fun. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's kind of a, a digest thing. Uh, yeah, well, and it's also like it's 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 funny to kind of rail against the uh, the, the the clickbait culture, well, yeah, and also it's like it's effectively headline humor. And as somebody who spent a fair amount of his formative years writing headlines, I I, I am I'm down with that. That's my uh, that that is that is relevant to my interests. Right. No, that's awesome. I uh, I, I write a lot. I end up getting a lot of the uh, uh, titles for a Daily Tech News show, so I can I can relate to that. So maybe that's why I I, I enjoy Save You a Click as well. That Absolutely. Kinda, yeah. No. Definitely. That kind of pun humor stuff. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so one day you you gain a superpower. Uh, what is it, and what's the first thing you do with it? Mm gain a superpower you're, you're given it you're stricken with it which whichever way you want to look at it i mean practically telepathy is kind of the way to go right like Certainly. as a performer <laughs> i kind of feel like telepathy to be able to talk to people via their mind or have like be able to absorb their thoughts I feel like that practically probably does does you the most good. Yeah, probably. I mean, I've always thought um, um, telekinesis would be great. You know, they move yeah. anything, you know. Well, but all right, so you're – but what can you do with telekinesis that you can't do by just kind of being really strong? Yeah, that you can fly. You know? you it's can a more yourself. impressive version of that. That's true. But it's like – telepathy i feel like you are you know that it would fundamentally change the way that you look at the world if you were able to hear people's thoughts That's you know true. so it's like that does a lot and also i feel like it just <clears throat> it would just be very practical that's the thing is that whenever anybody talks about like you know superhero like you get a power i think a lot of people think about the stuff that they would want to do for an hour you know or for a week sure. like flying or something you know, at the end of the day, yeah, you're going to fly around a lot, but also it's like, you don't know what it's like to fly, right? Like, <laughs> right, maybe it sucks. Annoying. Yeah, maybe like, you get motion be... sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I just get the feeling that, like, you're going to be flying way less than we think we are going to, you know? Right. Like, if you got a jet pack, right, and even, let's say, like, let's take fuel out of it, it's, um you know, super high efficiency battery thing. Sure. Um, I, I feel like you would still, the majority of them that you were jetpacking around, you would be thinking, like you'd be carving out time to do it, you know? Like right. you wouldn't just be jetpacking down to the 7-Eleven. You'd probably just walk, you know? That's true. I, I, you know, I do that with a car though too. You know, if there's if I need to go down to the gas station that's a block down the street, why am I going to get in the car? Yeah. You know, and it's like the car is amazing. You know, the car 150 years ago would have been looked at as a superpower. You know, that, yeah, you know, definitely. it would have been insane that you can go travel these distances at this certain time. So it's like, uh, I guess I always maybe it's just my brain. Like I'm always like, no, what would be actually effective? Right, useful. Yeah. Well, although what it's, you have to be able to turn it off, though telepathy, because I don't want to hear that shit all the time. Oh, certainly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you have to be able to control it. Yeah, you no. know. Otherwise, or it's else useless. you're. Oh no, there's there was a thin line between that and madness. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, in a similar vein of kind of 
stuff you've probably never thought about. Um, if you could move to any planet, real or fictional, and, and real being that somehow we established a colony there, uh, what would it be and uh, what would your house be there? Like, describe your house. Well, obviously, you got to go fictional, right? But more interesting that way. More variety, too. Yeah. Seems like everybody on Nova Prime from Guardians, like, they were having a good time. Like, it was very clean. Very clean. You think it's going to be too strict there? Not going to let you walk around smoking weed? Um, I feel like Nova, like, I feel like, like the Nova people, like, they, they know how to get down. Like, right. you know, they, there's, you had Stanley catting around, like, banging young <laughs> chicks. So it's like, I feel like there's, there's a, there's a bit of an underbelly. Right. Like, you just can't be running around the streets firing guns and stuff like the Guardians were, like. That seems like a reasonable reason why they were arrested. Like they had weapons out, like around children. <laughs> like no, if yeah, somebody yeah. did that, you would we would be like, yes, thank God they were arrested. Yeah, no, that actually makes a lot of sense. That's uh, plus you got you got some some badass ships that are gonna uh, you know protect you when some crazy ass yeah. opens in with his you know flying death machine. And... That's another thing where it's like I'm not. You know, there's more interesting planets, right? But again, like we spent 15 minutes there, and it was like really stressful, like in a movie. Like I don't know if I'm gonna live somewhere. Like uh, I'd hope it's nice. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe, maybe you won't want to pick the place that's getting, uh, you know, attacked every other day. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I feel like that was like it was a big thing with Nova because like they were getting attacked, but they weren't used to it. No, oh, true. Yeah, I get that. I, I need to watch that movie again. It's good movie. Oh, it's so good, man. I put it on my iPad. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I could just, like, kill certain, like, you know, kill a half hour on a flight. It's oh, so yeah. Good. It's it's on my Plex server, and I have it pinned to my, my phone, but I, I should put it on my... What's a Plex server? Uh, Plex? It's a media... You never heard of Plex? It's media management no. and playment... Playment? Play, <laughs> player system. Um, Really? You never heard of this? It's uh, You know what XBMC is? No. Really? Do you never do you not do the computer? Uh, do you not do TV the computer? Com computer TV, run your computer for run your TV from a computer thing. No, dude. Oh, all right. Yeah, Pl Plex is. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to turn you on to this now. <laughs> um, so you, you dump all I've your. I've actually been been pondering this kind I've of thing. I've been looking for this. Ah. Well, I run mine on a Mac Mini, so it's a thing that you can like kind of put together real quickly and simply. And uh, yeah, so you you put you put all your your media you know rip all your DVDs whatever to to your Plex server and uh, you know put them in its file structure, and um, then any device that you, you you if you pay for Plex Pass I, you can like pin stuff to your devices and but all you do is sign in on your device and you have access to your your media server, and then it'll you know, interesting yeah so in in that aspect you're 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 pulling off of your own bandwidth so if you want to watch out for that you know you can. I, I pay for Plex Pass, which is like four bucks a month or something, and uh, yeah. that lets you put stuff up in Cloud Sync, so you can store stuff on like Google Drive and Dropbox and stuff like that. So then you're pulling off their bandwidth and not having to, you know, worry about how much you've got for upload at home. Yeah, no, this sounds rad. I've been I've been thinking about like just getting rid of all my DVDs. Like you know, I, I just I want all these movies, but I don't. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we had like two of those big square like four per sheet binders <laughs> you know we had two of those just stuffed full of dvds and yeah I got all off of there onto the computer we have a three terabyte uh, little add-on drive thing for the <laughs> for the the mac mini it's, it works out really nicely and then of course you can get to it from anywhere you have internet access so yeah no that sounds really rad like i'm i'm totally down with that i want all of it no, thank you. This is the most informative interview I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Um, you know, honestly, you can send me an email. I'll help you set it up whenever you need to. So. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, totally. I will. So, all right. Back back to the questioning. Enough information, right? Go. Yes. <laughs> Go. So, uh, we, we all know that Chat Realm likes your beard, and I'm sure Ashley does to, to, a, to a point. Um, yeah. But what does Dr. Bird think about it? Dr. Bird's groomed my beard before. I kind of, I kind of imagine that he might have. Yeah, Doctor Bird loves. I mean, Doctor Bird's going through a hormonal phase, by the way. Right now. Oh, really? Yeah, he's being very, he's being a bitey little asshole. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, we're we're doing our best to deal with it. Uh, no, he's uh That was actually one of the first things that happened when he was just a little baby bird. Uh, and he first, Ashley first brought him home. 
uh, I was like sick, dead in bed, and uh, Doctor Bird groomed my beard, and that was it. <laughs> it was off to the races. That's a funny. love affair between us and the Berts. That's funny. My the, we have two cats in the house, and you know when my wife's feeling sick, the the cats will both like go in and lay next to her and like try to to make her feel better. So I, I wonder yeah. if that's what he was going for there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we we definitely have. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's definitely a, a a very communal thing, I guess. Like you know, we he, he, there, there's like this the flock mentality, I guess, with the birds that uh that's very very fun. Oh yeah, Gr- growing up, I had uh, my dad actually owned a uh, yellow naped Amazon, so it's a little bit bigger uh, parrot. Yeah. And uh, the guy, he was awesome. And, and ironically, his name was Alex before uh, my dad had gotten him. So that was just a, <laughs> one of those strange coincidences. So that's <laughs> that's hilarious, right? And uh, so yeah, he was he was a great bird. And the owner before him had been an opera singer, so he would do opera warm ups all day long. And it was yeah, yeah, he, he was he was just a, the funniest bird. But when I got into like high school and stuff, my, you know, my parents were both doing their thing with, with working and I was doing my thing with school and work. And so there was like not too many people in the house all that often. And so yeah. then, yeah, then he started getting real testy all the time being like, Hey, you know, where the hell have you guys been? You need to pay some attention to me cause uh, I'm here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that was, he was, he was a, he was a really fun bird, but of course I don't live with them now. So that makes that yeah. easier. <laughs> I don't know if I could deal with the bigger with the, the bigger parrot, you know. Like those things bite hard. Like that's that's a that's a that's a battlefield situation. I don't like animals biting me. Like even Doctor Bird. Like it's just like. Oh yeah. I don't know. There's some lizard part of my brain that's like, no, I'm better than you. <laughs> don't bite me. You're not gonna bite me. Who the hell do you yeah. think you are? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, uh, when when you were a, a little kid, uh, I don't know if you always wanted to be a, a podcaster, and but w- what did you want to be when, did, when you grew pre-podcasting, up? Pre-podcasting, that's all I wanted. Right, yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> but yeah, what did, what did you want to be when you grew up? When I was a very little kid, I wanted to be either an archaeologist or a stand-up comedian. Um, and I feel like I've I've done... I've done my best at shooting the gap. I feel like I'm I'm I'm, I'm in between. <laughs> I, well, uh, I'm not sure how they're related, but sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I guess. I, I mean, a, a reporter was probably the most serious vocation that I wanted to. I wanted to be, um, and I think there's still there's still a level that I think I can and am kind of fulfilling some of that promise, but. Oh, yeah. um, that was probably the biggest thing when I was uh, when I was in like middle school. I kind of knew that I wanted to be a reporter and a writer, and uh, you know that's what I went to school for. And uh, you know I don't quite know where um, you know where we would go from there, but like uh, you know, well, once I sort of got into the field, uh, I think other elements sort of just interested me interested me more like the entertainment element kind of interested me a lot more oh certainly one well, and you you have done definitely uh both in the newscaster thing on on podcasting with dtns and stuff and uh the the comedy thing you do very well on on you know pretty much a bit of all your podcasts but definitely night attack you know? yeah yeah night attack and jury are probably the two that have at least like the the entertainer sort of vibe to it dtns know, is those. super fun because it really is you know, Tom has made this amazing news analysis show that's actually kind of worth it. You right. know, I think news analysis very often can sort of just too much ride that line of like a well delivered BS conversation. Uh, and and Tom does such a good job of like just bringing in these other elements of of analysis that I really love. You know, it it reminds me a lot of kind of the conversations that you would have in a newsroom. Uh, where you're just trying to pick apart every element of it and like try to you know use the fact that you've seen this story unfold a million times to to remember a what happened and where the context is and what are the things that we're not thinking about like that kind of stuff and that's really what I love about DTNS. Oh, definitely. I, I mean, I watch it basically every day. It's, it gets me through the end of my work day. So. <laughs> oh, dude, it's it's awesome. Yeah, but I I think it's it's also great that they um that you guys pick one like one topic to talk about you know of course you run through the headlines real quick hey here's what's going on but 
here's the thing we actually want to talk about, and, and that's that's really cool too because you get to go in depth on that kind of one subject there. Sure, you know, but it all really depends. Like, it, it, it's an amazing format, and that's always what uh, I've I've kind of loved the most about Tom's thinking. But at the same time, it you need to like carving out time and talking more about something doesn't really matter if a you don't give a rat's ass about it or b you don't have anything interesting to say. And that's what I think is so great about Tom. What I very much try to bring to the show is like I just don't like it is death to me to have an opinion that is looked at as like boring. Oh, sure. You know, or like you've heard it before. Like, even if it's something that I really, really think it's like, I, I love Apple, right? I think Apple's a really, really well run company, but it's like, I don't want to just say, Oh, Apple's really great. And they're well run. You know, it's like, you want to think about other elements to it or right. else like, you're just saying a very boring opinion. Well, exactly. and, or like to just be like, oh, yeah, iOS versus Android or something like that. And it's like, oh, one is way better than the other. It's just so <laughs> snorefest to me. Right. And you don't want to sound like you're pandering to one to one or the other because I'm, I'm the same way when people say, oh, you know, when you have a MacBook, I'm like, yeah, it's because I like my, my MacBook at home. I, I'm sitting in front of a Windows machine and a Linux machine and a Mac machine. So, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's not to me, it's not about pandering. It's about like, is there a interesting way to talk about this? You know, right. like, is it something you've heard before? And even if you disagree with me or you or you do agree with me, I, I want it to be something that you have never heard. And that's my big that's my big thing. Yeah, that's awesome. I, th I think you definitely do bring a lot of that to uh, to Daily Knit Tech News shows as well. I hope so. Well, we'll talk about one one of your other shows real quick here. Who's your pick for the win in the next season of FSL? Oh, man. You know, it's, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's hard to underestimate how much, uh, the LA guardians of the galaxy, uh, you know, are, are going to, are, are going to bring, they're going to, they're going to be a big force to be reckoned with. Yeah. They've, they've had an awesome, uh, uh, training, great training off period season, and, you know? and great off season. Yeah. You so. know, it's, it's, it's amazing how well these kind of misfit parts work together. You know, you, you don't quite know why, but, but yet they do oh, yeah. in a way that, that seems to be far more than the Avengers, by the way. I think they're kind of stealing the Avengers thunder and, and for a, a team that really needs to, to be out there and, and, uh, you know, kind of reclaim their mantle. It's, uh, it's going to be rough sledding for them. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. Uh, I don't know. I, I may have to, uh. I, I may have to pull my support of the uh, um, uh, of the the Avengers now. I couldn't, couldn't think of the word. <laughs> uh, you know, just just thinking about uh, you're right. They they have had a good good start to the season. Every they're good uh, uh, off season, and and hopefully they'll have a real good start to the season too. So yeah. Um. Well, yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, everybody can find you on Twitter at Justin R. Young, right? That's correct. That's it. Yeah. Justin R. Young, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. Snap shirts. All the major <laughs> platforms. Right. Well, thanks for joining me. Do you have anything else that you want to uh, plug? For Oh, no. Like this couple no, people I watching? love doing this. Stuff. Here, I want to plug this show. This show's great. And, <laughs> and uh, literally, the, the, the greatest joy of my life is seeing. A, a fully operational and self-aware community with chat realm and, and the diamond club and stuff like that, because it, 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 ma it matters so much more than just kind of people who enjoy your work. You know, when people who enjoy your work, the work could get bad or they can get busy and then they just kind of go away, you know, or, or things fade. And ultimately that always sort of happens no matter what, but, if everybody is doing their own thing and fulfilling their own, like, you know, scratching their own itches, uh, like then it means something more, you know? And, and, and it really means a lot to me that, that I'm in any way a part of it. Oh yeah. And I think that's a little bit of that special sauce that makes the, the, you know, diamond club kind of network of, of podcasts and stuff work, work really, really well. And everybody does it so enthusiastically too. <laughs> like, yeah. All, all the work. Yeah. Things. It's amazing. No, certainly. Right. It's, it's, it's just, it's so good. I love it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Well, thanks again for joining me. Um, you can watch more of these interrogations at tinvec.com slash DD. There's, uh, you know, RSS and iTunes links for subscriptions and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time.
a little bit of outro music. Uh huh. Talk over it sometimes because that's the cool thing to do. Yeah, sure. I mean, it shows that you're in control of it. Exactly. In your face. In your face. <laughs> Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>